what's the biggest hurdle right now to be being able to to boot up that backup again the, the full backup of like the whole epigenome you know a full body reset yeah i mean that's that that'd be nice <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that's what we work towards in my life every day uh, this is our goal can i can i like reset only like the good bits <laughs> <laughs> can we like, can we like leave out, you know, like that time I was an asshole, you know, in college? Like, can we just like not reset that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I think we, we can, we're going to retain our memories. We're going to retain our wisdom and our current personality. That's the prediction, but we're going to regain the ability to think uh, and store memories like, a young, like we did when we were young. And that's true for other parts of the body. Uh, muscle strength, we just achieved muscle age reversal, you know, age reversal of uh, skin. Now. Um, so that we're ticking off the organs one by one and, and uh, tissues. But we've also done the whole animal. We can express, as you say, turn on these three embryonic genes in the whole animal. And we know for sure that it's safe uh, in those animals. We turned it on at high levels for a year and didn't turn it off. Usually the treatment's only four to six weeks, eight weeks at the most. But we kept it on for a year. No sign of any adverse effects in those mice. Now, the, the holy grail would be to know if those mice live longer or are they younger. We don't know because the journal and the reviewers of our paper made us kill them Ugh. to to check on the number of tumors in, inside. And it turns out they had, if anything, a trend towards having fewer tumors than the, the untreated old mice. But now we're repeating that experiment. But one of the, the, the problems with current technology is evenly distributing gene therapies across the body it tends to accumulate in the liver mainly. And so give us another couple of years and we should be able to do that. And then we can do that experiment in a really clean way. And hopefully we can keep resetting those mice and make a mouse live for a couple of decades instead of just two years. Yeah, I, I saw with this three gene combination, you said you can reset cells by, in mice, 75% was a number I heard. And and you can measure the, the age of, of the cell and the body. So like measuring that, you found that there was what well, not like a full reset, but 75% ain't, ba ain't bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it's even more remarkable than that. So we do use um, mark, chemical marks that control the epigenome as a clock. Um, Stephen Horvath at UCLA is the guy that gave his name to that Horvath clock, as we call it. But uh, what, what is exciting about what, what we can do is we can measure those changes with this cheek swab. But what we also know is that that's just the, an indicator of what's truly going on in the cell. And that is that the music of, of our lives, like on that CD, truly the, the music of our lives gets replayed from a younger state. So what does that mean? So we've got 20,000 genes. So let's say there's, there's 2,000 that become misregulated during aging. We found that the majority of those get reset back to the, the level that they should be when the eye was young. So think about this, that there are genes that come on when they shouldn't during aging in the eye and genes that got shut off when they shouldn't during the aging in the eye. And the, the reset restored those exactly, near exactly to where they should be. So the cell somehow knows that a gene that came on should go off and a gene that got shut off should come back on. How does it know that? We don't know that. that that's what we're chasing right now. I think that's the Nobel Prize if someone wants to get it. 